Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hey everyone, Sue here at 1A Auto, and we're gonna pull the engine on this 08 Subaru to show you how to do head gaskets. You can do them in the car, but we're gonna pull the engine so that you can get a better visual and understanding locations of all items. Need any parts for your car? Click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. Raise and support your vehicle with jack and jack stands or two post lift. We're gonna drain the radiator. We're gonna loosen the radiator drain petcock. There you go. Once that's draining, I'm just gonna pull the clips. Remove the oil drain plug and drain the oil. And don't forget, if you do head gaskets in the vehicle or out of the vehicle, you always have to do an oil change after. Now I'm gonna spray all the exhaust studs and nuts that need to come down from the cross member pipe so they'll be loose enough so no breakage will occur. Remove the battery hold down. Now remove the battery terminals. and remove the battery. Now you can remove your air box. Remove the drive belt shield. Loosen the hose clamps and remove the upper radiator hose. Remove the battery cable from the alternator. And I like to put the nut back on so I don't lose it. Remove the alternator bolts. There we go. Remove the alternator. You might need a pry bar to help you out. Taking the power steering pump bracket assembly out because I'm not going to drain the power steering system. So I want to take the whole bracket out with the pump, set it aside. Now I'm going to loosen the AC tensioner belt pulley so I can remove the AC belt. Now I'm going to remove the AC bracket from the engine block. So what I like to do when I pull an engine, I start in one section and I work myself around. So I took the battery out first just for 100% protection. I knew that I'm not going to use an AC machine on the AC, so I'm not gonna recycle a Freon. So I left it intact, put my compressor up over here, and the same with the power steering. I didn't wanna make a mess. So on Subarus, it's, it's pretty easy. Just leave the pump and the hoses connected, put it up over there. So now I disconnected my fuel lines, my brake booster line. I've got the starter over here, a couple of heater hoses. I'm still draining the coolant, so I won't do the heater hoses, but I'm gonna work my way over there and, and work that way over, basically. Then we'll lift the vehicle up and I'll work from down below. So this is the return line to the gas tank. So you have your fuel feed and fuel return line. Set those up there. So on this side, uh, you'll find a lot of your, your um, imports 
that will have a one main harness so that you don't have to undo the whole vehicle. You just unplug the main harness here. You have to push down on that, pull that great tab down, and the whole harness comes disconnected. But we're stuck on this, so I've got to take this tab out, take this bracket out so I can get the harness to move. So this harness stays with the, the engine and that stays in the vehicle. Disconnect the O2 sensors because it's going to be the O2 sensors are going to be staying in the front pipe, so that's going to come down from below. So I'm going to disconnect the O2 sensors up here now, so that when the vehicle is lifted up, I don't have to struggle with it. There we go. There we go. Remove the bell housing bolts from the top of the block, and then we're going to remove the lower section once we raise the vehicle. I'm going to leave the positive wire right on that starter and just back the starter out and leave the cable attached. Remove the heater hoses. Remove the front exhaust cross pipe fasteners. Then we can remove the cross pipe. Let's mold them out. Nut and washer. One on both sides. And there's a the washer. 14 millimeter. And I'll take all the bell housing bolts out, the starter bolt on the bottom out, and access the torque converter nuts, and then pull the engine. Just so you know, these studs down here will be the only real headache you'll ever have on these. I'm pulling an engine on a Subaru, that's the only nightmare. Once you have drained all the coolant from the radiator and engine block, now you can reinstall the radiator drain plug. We can loosen up the lower hose clamps and remove the lower hose. I have to take the throttle body off to access the torque converter little port. There's a rubber boot there so we can take the torque converter nuts off the transmission torque converter. So I've got four 10 millimeter socket size bolts. So there's the plastic boot, and I'm going to turn the crank and access, access the torque converter mounting bolts. So the crank bolt, if you need to know, is a 22 millimeter socket, and there it is, it's a bolt. So you have to put pressure on the crank while you go the op opposite way with the uh, You don't recommend turning that crank counterclockwise too much because it takes your timing belt can skip a tooth. So there we go. In this case, I take this bolt completely out. I don't spin around. Okay, there's the other one. So I have to take the AC compressor off because the lovely AC bracket, here's the hook for lifting the engine. 
So easy thing is, is now that the bracket's out, I can get the compressor out a lot easier anyways. There's three 12 millimeter socket mounting bolts on that bracket. So I'm gonna take the coolant fans out. Should take all of 10 minutes if that. I'd rather be rather have it out now than lifting the engine up and say, ah, oh, those need to come out. So that's how you get rid of the overflow tank. Okay, one more. Then we'll just disconnect the electrical part of the fans and pull them out. It's down below here, just like everything, clip. This one's a pull up on the clip, pull it out. There we go. The other hook is in the back. There's a round bracket slot for, to put a chain through. Now we've got, we got the setup. I'm gonna get the engine hoist. Don't forget you need to put a jack under the transmission. Just need to jack it up enough so that that clears because you've got the two studs in the bottom of the transmission. There we go. Now the motor mounts are clear of the frame. Let's make sure my power steering pump's out of the way. Yeah, and those bolts look clear. What we're gonna do is get a pry bar. Go between the housing. Pry it free. Cannot forget your torque bolts that I already took out. And there's a reason for that. If you drag the torque converter out, you can break the pump seal on the transmission side. I think I'm gonna jack the training jack up a little bit more. There we go. Now it takes the pressure off that bell housing. Hoist. And there you have it. You want to see the stud? These are the two studs I was talking about down below. That's the other reason for the floor jack. You've got to bring the transmission up so that the motor mount bolts clear the cross member. I got to take the hood prop bracket off. It's no big deal, 10 millimeter socket. I'll just turn it. Now you can take a second, look in the back of your engine. Confirm there's no hoses, no cables, no wires. And we're ready to go. Make sure your oil pan clears the radiator. And then you slide her out. So this is the transmission torque converter. It's an automatic transmission. If it was a standard, there would just be a clutch pack and a flywheel. The difference is, is that you, you don't have anything to unbolt. These are the torque converter mounting bolts to the flywheel. So you wanna make sure it stayed seated. It didn't pop out. It's a, what they call a sun gear in the center. That sun gear goes through several stages. So you spin your torque converter and push at the same time. And if it had slid out just a snidge, you want to make sure it seats all the way back. You can also put your fingers back here and you'll feel the roundness against the aluminum housing. This did not move, it's seated right where it should be.
So now the engine's on the stand. I've got a coolant bucket down there because I keep tipping it, getting some of the coolant left out of the water pump and the block. It's just draining. I'm going to start, you have to remove the intake. So let's start by removing plug wires. I like to leave them attached to the coil so it's no big deal. Probably going to end up replacing them anyways. I think that coil is a 10 millimeter socket. Now you can get to the connector and disconnect it, pushing on down that tab, squeezing the connector out. So there's your ignition coil. This only has three mounting bolts with the uh, plug wires on it. Someone has mocked, I don't know, I don't know what these markings mean because they sure don't mean one, two, three, four because they're all like ones. <laughs> and it doesn't matter, the schematic is right there. There is your, your one, three, two, four. Take the end timing cover off. 10 millimeter socket. There's three of them total. I'm going to take this bracket back off the AC bracket. It's a 14 millimeter socket. And that way I can get the pulley out of the way, then the monarch balancer, and put the timing belt on top dead center. Even pressure, just pulling it off. It's just a keyway, that's it. It's not pressed on. I'm gonna need the crank bolt, so I'm gonna put that back in. Put the harmonic balancer aside. I'm just gonna take the cover off now. 10 millimeter socket on all the bolts going around. Now that the cover's off, I put the crank bolt back in the crank and I can turn it to bring it top dead center. Subaru is nice in the sense that they have everything marked. And this is marked with white paint. There's a white mark there, there. So I'm gonna bring this crank around and line those two up. And then once that's lined up, I'm gonna check my marks over here. They have a cutout in the back cover, white paint and then there's a slot for the white. And then over here, there's a notch in this crank, the right side cramp cam, and that's gonna line up just with a straight X in the, marked in the head. Now we're all set, everything seems to be good. So the other thing about, um, we're looking for on this cam sprocket is the arrow, manufacturer puts an arrow here, and that's pointed right here to the edge Usually there's a marking, that notch. If you get a schematic for the printout of a timing belt, it'll show you the arrows. And then the same here. Now with the timing belt all lined up, I'm gonna take the timing belt tensioner off. It's a 14 millimeter socket. I just undo the bolt, mounting bolt. There's a large washer in the back. It might fall out, and that's fine. So now I can set that aside. Oh, see, it came with a nice little O-ring, holds that washer on. We're gonna end up having to put this in a vise when it comes time to reinstalling. And you can use a small drill bit, or if you have some of the leftover pins, that I usually have a bunch of those. So now I'm just gonna take that belt off. As you can see, it's new, so we're gonna reuse it. If you have not replaced your belt, uh, now is the time to do it. Even if it looks okay to you, and you, but you don't have any records of when it was changed, change it. So now I'm gonna take each cam sprocket off, and I use a uh, strap wrench, belt strap wrench. You can use a cam sprocket tool if you have one. That's not heavily torqued. The uh, bolt is a 17 millimeter. I 
Actually, I could probably use an air gun. I might have to. Yeah. I'm gonna line that back up before I remove it. Make sure you line that back up. I might be able to use it. That's right on there. The cams are clearly marked. This says L, and the other one had an R on it. So the driver's side is the left side of the engine, and the R would be the passenger side. So now I'm going to just start to connect, disconnect electrical connectors that I know are not coming out. Look, here's the crank sensor. So I'm going to disconnect that. Push down on the tab. This is a, I do believe the oil pressure. OP switch, or well, it could be a coolant temp. It's only a single prong though. Just gonna push up on that. Here's the temp, this is the coolant. So that is the oil pressure and that's the coolant. It looks like we have a purge valve here. Disconnect these grounds. Those are 12 millimeter. I'm gonna put those right back where they came from. So now I'm gonna undo the emission tube. It's a 22 millimeter wrench and wish me luck. <laughs> it's been soaking for a couple of days now. I might have to get some sort of, look at that. Whew. I'm gonna take it out down here also. Seriously, I did not loosen that up. <laughs> that was pretty, uh, pretty cool, I locked out on that. I'm gonna check for blockage. Looks pretty good. I'll probably end up blowing some shop air through there lightly, making sure it's not clogged. I don't think it will be. So now I'm gonna disconnect the connector at the EGI valve and then take the harness off of the mounting. I'm just gonna use a pair of needle nose. You can use a body trim tool. I'm trying to keep the connector, I mean the plastic connectors. I like to reuse them. You know what, I'm gonna see if I can get a body tool in there. Okay. Broke. Looks like a PCV hose. And we have two bolts back here. The harness connected. It looks like a 12 millimeter socket. So now I can disconnect my knock sensor connector. Pull on that tab. So now I'm gonna disconnect the bolt that goes to this bracket because this harness is gonna go with the whole upper intake. I say upper like there's more than one. <laughs> I'm so used to working on the American cars that have upper and lower intakes. There it is. So two bolts. Attach that bracket. Same size. So now I know I can just put those in the place so I'm not 
Losing my mind later. I got three connectors over here. Perfect. There is one bolt here that holds these two connectors on for the O2 sensors, but I'm gonna undo the actual intake so when I lift that up and move it aside, I can really get to that bolt a lot easier. Now we're gonna disconnect the intake to the cylinder head or block. So there is four mounting intake screws on each side, two in the back here and two in the front. 12 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna slide these out. They all should be the same length. When I come over to this side, I see that there's more connectors I need to undo in the front. So I've got the cam sensor, another solenoid, there we go. Okay, now those should all lift up with the intake. I'm going to undo the same two bolts on the front and then two in the back. Four total. So now I can move my intake up. And like I said, this bracket right here, but now with the intake dismounted, I have a better chance of getting in there with my extension and socket. Because the heads are going out, I'm not going to put the bolt back in there. Let that come through. Okay, we have one. So you can see the harness comes right out. The whole upper harness comes out with the intake. It's bolted down below. The fuel lines from each injector assembly are underneath. In the injectors, everything stays put. So here is the intake gasket for the right side bank. And if you look closely, you see the rust on that? That didn't just happen, that has been a part in sucking air into the intake. So this car probably had a good hesitation and a, a surging idle, which means the idle probably every once in a while did a little search for it. All depends on the temperature. So now that with the intake off, you can really, really see a boxer engine or what it means. The crank is located in the center, like all of them, but instead of having a V-shaped design to the block and the head sitting up here, everything is sitting parallel to each other. So your pistons are connected to your crank and everything is going straight out this way instead of any V-shape. While you're here, I strongly recommend you take this coolant jacket off, clean it up, and regasket it. You can almost see just a smidge. It looks like there could have been some coolant coming out at some point. 10 millimeter socket. There's only four of these mounting this coolant tube to the block. lift that block right now. So there's the coolant jacket from cylinder head to cylinder, I mean block to block. O-rings definitely crushed, they're probably original. I'm going to use my engine stand for what it's for and I'm going to actually tilt the engine so that I can work on it a little easier. I have a catch basin for any excessive coolant and I have a catch pan for oil. Okay, we're going to leave that right there. Now we can really get to this cylinder head. I've got a 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna take the valve cover off first. Some of these bolts are, the heads on them look pretty corroded. Should be able to just lift that up. I might need to get a screwdriver. 
pry that. This is a right side bank valve cover. I like to put the valve cover bolt with the valve cover and I'll set that aside until it comes time to clean it. I'm gonna peel off the old valve cover gasket. And I've got two spark plug chamber seals. I'm gonna pull those out. Take this bracket off for the machine shop so they don't have to deal with it. Take the old exhaust gasket off. <laughs> Throw things at yourself. I'm gonna take the little bolt here, it's a 10 millimeter head socket because the cylinder head starts right here. So when I pull the bolts and the head bolts and pull that cylinder out, that's gonna be holding it there, so. Now we're at the six head bolts on this side. And the manufacturer has in the schematic, they call it A, B, C, D, E, F. That's the order they want you to take it out. And you're gonna leave A and C in, halfway in, so when you take a rubber mallet to the block, the head to disconnect it from the block, it doesn't fall down on the ground. So we're gonna start off with, it's a 14 millimeter, 12 point socket. You have to have a 12 point socket. So now that I've loosened it up, that's A. And I can take the air gun to it once the head bolts are loosened. This is some, the B. C. Last one. And the reason why they manufacturers, all manufacturers have some certain pattern to disconnect head bolts and to tighten head bolts the sequence is to prevent warpage. So you can't just go willy nilly and just start ripping the head bolts out. They want you to do it in a certain sequence to release the pressure. Now I can probably get electric on there. There we go. So the head automatically fell, separated. That's perfect, so I don't have to take a rubber mallet to it. A and C are still in there, so, so I'm gonna take the rest of them out. You know what, now we're going to tip it up so I don't have to worry about it falling off. Now with the head at this angle, I can take these head bolts completely out and the pins will hold it in place. Now I can take, just lift it up. Now with the cylinder head off, this is where you want to examine the head gasket to see if there was any damage. Well, once again, we're doing this uh, just because we have this engine available to us and 1A Auto makes the head gasket set. So we're gonna do this to show you guys how to do it. This had no running condition and it had no coolant leak. But right now, if this was a bad cylinder head, which these are notorious for leaking, most of the time they leak externally and, uh, but we have no, no problems with this. But you would look for tears, uh, separations. Right in here, a lot of times they rip. 
always keep the head gasket, the old one, before you install the new one. Match it up, confirm that all your holes for the drainage, oil and coolant are correct. So to prep my head before I bring it to the machine shop, I'm just gonna pull the spark plugs out and um, make sure I include the valve seals, seats. So I'm gonna look at the head before I take it to the machine shop and confirm where the head gasket's at. I don't see any cracks. The valves look nice and clean. Everything's pretty clean in here. They're gonna machine it. They'll plane it, check for warpage, and leak test it for internal cracks. Now I'm gonna take off the left side head. I'm gonna start with taking this back of the timing belt cover off. 10 millimeter socket. This cover's all cracked and missing the ears, so I've got a replacement for it already. This dipstick tube is mounted to the head, so 10 millimeter socket. Loosen that right up. Pull that right out. Now I'm just gonna tilt my engine again so I can take the valve cover and take the head off. And that is why I have that catch pan. I'm gonna take the valve cover off. 10 millimeter socket. So now I'm gonna remove the cylinder head bolts on this side. Same sequence, A, B, C, D, E, and then F. Leaving A and C partially threaded in so the head doesn't fall down. Nope, there it is. Now I'm gonna tilt the engine back up so I can remove that head. Just grab the head firmly and lift off those pins. I'm gonna examine the head gasket again before I take this one off. Remove the oil filter with an oil filter wrench. Here we have the uh, original headset that came out of the Subaru engine. We got head bolts head gaskets, intake, exhaust gasket, valve cover gaskets. And here's the complete set that we got at 1A Auto. Comes with new head gaskets, new exhaust, new intake, new valve cover, head bolts, valve seals, timing cover gasket, which is a, is a big on Subarus. Those always fall apart or expand from oil has the foam pieces for the back of the timing cover to the block and cam seals and a whole bunch of miscellaneous seals. These are the cross member coolant tube seals. It's a nice complete set. If you need these parts or any other parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. Once I clean the surface from any loose oil and grit, I take my sanding block and I'm, I like to go at an angle. Now this will assure me I've got a flat surface. And I'm just going to get the rest of the
grease and markings up, make a nice smooth surface for my new head gasket. Now my heads were sent out to a machine shop, which I strongly recommend you do. I thought they looked fine. Visually, I couldn't find anything, but I always send them out anyways. And they were four thousandths off, so they were warped. And they checked the valve seats for you. And uh, I had one cracked valve seat, and they fixed that. So these are all things that, if you don't bring it to a machine shop and have it done professionally, you know, this is worse for the way you're doing all this for nothing. So it's worth spending the extra money. Do it right. So I'm going to have a nice clean surface on the head when it's time for assembly. So I'll take a uh, parts cleaner or a brake clean and I clean the emery cloth off. And then I go give it a quick like wet sand. And I'll just take a shop cloth, soak it with some brake clean or parts cleaner, and I gently clean the surface. It takes all the material off. That's left behind from the sanding. And I'll take some shop air just to get any particles out. Prior to installing my head from the machine shop, I'm going to put a new cam seal in. I didn't give it to the machine shop. If you have them, you can give them to the machine shop. They'll install them. But I wanted to show you how I take them out. I just take my smallest flathead screwdriver and I pry it out on both sides. So now that seal is out. Take a clean rag and I take the screwdriver and I just give it a swirl around in there to make sure there's no oils on the outside. And then I'll take some silicone paste or grease, clean new grease, Vaseline. A lot of people use different things. And I'll just coat the inside of that seal just where the cam is gonna, shaft is going to sit. Not this, not this edge. And that way when I slide it on, it moves smooth, doesn't dry. If it's dry and it catches that spring, the spring in the back here, if that pops off and you, don't, you do not know that and it's inside, the seal's gonna pour out. So you can push it in evenly with your fingers. Let it seat. And then I'll just take like a socket or a brass punch. On this case, it's a pretty good size socket. If I can find a socket that's hollow enough, and I can press that right in. So I'll place a socket right over here and I'm just gonna use a rubber dead blow hammer. I'm just guaranteeing it's seating flush all the way around. Now you want it to sit in there deeper, but I've got it started perfectly all the way around. Now I'll take my fine punch and even it out. If you noticed when I was spinning this around, I'm spinning it with an angle more out so that the edge is just riding on the outer edge. I'm not pushing in on the inner part of that seal and it's a light tap. You can even use your hand if you're, you're strong enough, you can push it in all the way around. Paying attention that the pressure is on that outer edge. So now we're gonna put the new head gasket on, and line it up with the guide pins, push over the washers there. Now it sits nice and flush. Flush. Before I mount that head on there, I'm just gonna take a cloth, and give it a quick swipe, make sure there's nothing, no burrs. I'm sure the machine shop made sure of all of it, but here we go. All right, so we're gonna go place it right on there. Now I'm gonna line up the head bolt holes. Try not to slide the head on the new gasket. You don't want it to slide all around. I'm going to raise the engine 
just to assure that when I walk away, it doesn't fall off. Everything looks good. Now, before you install the head bolts, you dip the threads of the head bolts in clean oil and just submerge them like that. And you bring them over. So now I'm just going to hand tighten them in the sequence that the manufacturer recommends. A is the center top. I'm just bottoming out like that. B is the bottom center. Once again, this is a 12.14 millimeter socket or an actual specialty socket for Subaru. C is the top left. You see the cross pattern I'm going to be making here. D is the bottom right. E is the rear bottom. And then F is the last top right, top front. First step is to torque them to 29.5 foot pounds in the sequence. I've lowered the engine so that I can get better leverage because I'm just a little old thing. So <laughs> make my life a little easier to work smarter, not harder. So now we've moved up to 70.1 foot pounds and we're going to tighten in the sequence of A, B, C, D, E, F, which we've marked for you. Now the next step is to loosen all the bolts in reverse order, 180 degrees. So that is half of a full circle. So I'm here, I'm gonna end up over here. So we're gonna start at F and work our way back to A. When you hear that squeak, <coughs> That means I need to add more oil to that bolt. So as soon as I'm done taking them all 180, this loosening sequence, I'll probably take that bolt and add some oil to that porthole and let it run down. Now it says to do the same in another 180. <laughs> they just wanted it at one level, then the next level. So you can't do 360, 360 all at once because they don't want the head to get warped. That's the best way I can explain that. So let's go to F again, do another 180. What this is doing is it crushed the gasket and now we're loosening up to reseat it. I'm going to take that bolt completely out. It should be safe. It's completely loose. I'm going to add some more oil. Basically just until I feel it touch, because that's pretty much where it was after that sequence of loosening. Perfect. 
So after I've loosened them all, then those stages, now we're gonna tighten again. Alphabetical order at 7.4 foot pounds. Now it's 22.1 foot pounds. Now it's 44.3 foot pounds in alphabetical order. The next step is all bolts in alphabetical order, 90 degree angle. My torque wrench, electric, my electrical digital one here, has an angle head on it, so it beeps when I reach 90. I pre-programmed it for 90. So and now I've moved up to the big guns because I have to turn it another 45 degrees, which is a half of 90 degrees. So I, wanna, I don't want to really break my back on this. So it's non-ratchet. So if from here to parallel is 90, I need to be there, half of 90 in alphabetical order. Last step is to tighten A and B an additional 45 degrees, and then we are done. Now that your head on this side is all done, torqued down, just repeat the procedure on the other side. I'm gonna put the, before I put the cams on, the cam sprockets, sorry, I have to put the cover onto the back of the timing cover. Now I got this one at the dealer because the old one had broken ears on the actual back of the timing cover. So that doesn't seal and water can get into the timing belt, which is a no-go. So I got the cover from the dealer. Now it doesn't come with, the dealer cover does not come with this new seal, this rubber seal or these rubber bushings, or the cam sensor foam pad. But the good news is the head gasket kit from 1A Auto comes with all these gaskets. So all I had to do is pick up the cover from the dealer, and now I can install. I installed the gaskets from the kit. Now I can put this cover together. So now I'm going to install the bolts, 10 millimeter socket, and just hand tighten them down. Line up the key way with the key slot. Put the cam bolt on. So now I'm going to put the Sprocket on the left bank marked. You can see the L for the left side sprocket. And the torque spec is 57.5 foot pounds. That's a 17 millimeter socket. I'm using a strap wrench to hold the actual sprocket in place. Now I'm going to make sure that the cam mark is lined up to the proper spot. Now it's time to put the right bank sprocket on, lining up the keyways.
and then put the sprocket bolt on. Now we're going to do the right side, and it's the same torque as the left side cam sprocket, 57.5 foot pounds. I'm going to line that up with the marking right there on that head. I'm going to end up replacing the front crank seal. So I'm taking the bolt out that turns the crank. I'm still lined up perfectly on my center of my crank pulley. So I'm going to take the bolt out of the way. And I'm going to take the gear shaft off. I just take a pry bar or a flat screwdriver and gently push. You'll see it come off the keyway. It comes right off. And now I can pull the seal out and replace it. Um, I take a nice small flat edge screwdriver. I go on the inner side and push the seal out, not the outer edge. If you damage the aluminum housing here, you could have a leak. That's how easy that is. And like always, before I install a seal, I like to just take a, a clean rag. I take the flathead screwdriver, and gently just make sure there's no dirt, oils, and clean that up in there. Now it's ready to install the new seal. I put a little clean grease, silicone paste, Vaseline, just line the inside of the seal so that you can glide it on like that. Now the good thing about these, the pressure of your thumb can pretty much center them. Now I can tap it on the rest of the way. I use a nice clean small brass punch on the outer edge. They do make tools for this. You can probably build one, a little piece of PVC, and a bolt and use the crank bolt to pull it in. And you could do it old school, like I'm doing here. Always take your index finger or finger that you trust of feeling the Make sure it's sitting flush all the way around. You'll feel the lip raised up, like right there. I feel a little raise, and over there. Perfect. I don't know, I'm gonna get some of this stuff off. I don't know exactly what that was. Now I can install the sprocket. So I'm going to line that keyway up with the bolt. It's right directly down at six o'clock. I'm going to put my crank bolt back on because when I install the timing belt, I might need to turn that. And I'm going to clean the head surfaces for the front exhaust pipe. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other head. At this point, I'm going to install my exhaust manifold studs too. I took them out for the machine shop and so it would be easier to clean and I also wanted to replace them. These are the ones that came out. They're pretty worn down and uh, rusted up. Look at all the rust on the tip. Missing threads. For the price, it's well worth it. And I got six total, three for both sides. And I also got the locking nuts, the new ones. Here we have a um, stud removal tool or installation tool. It has three rollers in there and they, as you put in your bolt or stud to lock it in and you twist it, the rollers lock into place. So it does minimal damage to the threads it rounds them just a little bit, but they you never need to re-tap. They always seem to clean themselves up with a regular bolt that you put on. So you hand tighten all your items. And if you have this tool, or if you want to go purchase one, you can snug them right down. 
and then reverse it, it comes right off. I'll show you on the other side how to use two of the old lock nuts, possibly. Let's see if it goes on. So you can put one down like that, and then take the other old one, thread it on, combine the two. So I'm gonna hold the bottom one with a 14, tighten the top, I'm just gonna tighten them so that now I can lower down this, the stud will go right into place. Now to take them off, you just reverse the procedure. Put the stubby one down there, hold it, and I can take the top wrench and break the nut. Obviously be careful, don't drop anything in there. If you don't trust yourself, you can always put packing tape over the holes. Then you would just repeat procedure to every stud to tighten it down. This is the coolant tube, the crossover coolant tube that goes from cylinder head to cylinder head. Uh, this is a pretty prominent part that leaks on these cars. So obviously we took it off to do the head job, the valve job in the head gasket. So prior to installation, I'm gonna clean it all up and you can see look at the corrosion on the, the threads of the bolts. That tells me that probably seeped coolant up in there for a while. A lot of this white stuff is just small, it's coolant leaks, like coming out and just steaming and getting stuck on the aluminum. So we have to clean these up good, clean all the threads on these bolts, clean the surface on both sides. And if you forget how it mounts, this is how it went. So there's your crossover coolant from the side of the block to that side of the block. And it's just O-rings and through the years, they get crushed and the head gasket set from 1A Auto comes with new gaskets. I like to take a wire wheel, that way I can also see if it's pitted. If you have a wire wheel or a wire brush, take advantage of that, clean all that corrosion off where the hose sits. Came out pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the bolts. So now I'm gonna take the O-ring out. It's pretty hardened in there. Good, it's petrified actually. Look at that. Yeah, this has been leaking. Just probably seeping it up just enough. Oh, this is how stiff that is. That's how old it is. <laughs> so that surface has got to get cleaned. So what I'm going to use is a brass brush. Now I'll probably end up using this little pocket screwdriver. I'll spray some parts cleaner in there. See if I can get it down to a good surface before I reinstall the new O-ring. So this is why you do all the gaskets, when they're feasible. So I just took a little brake clean, parts cleaner, and I sprayed the rag to soak it in there. I just want to get any loose particles, pick that up. Here's the new gasket, as you can see, it's supposed to be round, not flat, <laughs> and you just seat them right in there. Now we're ready to place that down and put the four bolts in. I'm just gonna bottom them out with my speed ratchet. I'm doing a cross pattern. The torque specs on this crossover tube, they call a water tube, is 
five foot pounds. I'm going to use my parts washer to clean up the valve covers. So now we're going to put the valve cover gasket on, line it up the way it seems like it's, it's going to be. When installing the valve cover gasket on this Subaru, uh, both left side and right side bank gaskets are identical. There's no, you can't mix them up. They're pretty self-explanatory. There are some pretty obvious moldings, the way it's curved. I like to start at the bottom because sometimes the rubber is longer, it seems longer than what you need. So you have to like press the rubber gasket in. If you run across this, don't get frustrated and think you have the wrong gasket. And I just kind of push it towards the center. Like to see that curve, it's kind of milled a little bit different. But if you put it in there, Once it settles down, pushes down, everything else does line up, so. Once those little ribs on the rubber get caught inside the valve cover grooves, you're good to go. Look at So now that's all pushed down. When it comes time to install the valve cover, don't forget your spark plug chamber seals. Put those back on. That'll make a mess if you don't put these back on. Now there's no extra RTV gasket sealant needed, necessary. There's no breaks in the aluminum block, so there's no creases. I'll just wipe it down one last time to make sure there's no oil or grease. And now we're just going to place the valve cover right on. You've got six bolts. Those are the bolts with the shank sleeve. And there is a sequence to tightening. The torque is 4.7 foot-pounds in a sequence of A, B. So A is the top, B, C, D. Then E, F is up in the top corner here. So now I'm gonna get my torque wrench, set it to 4.7 foot-pounds, and do that sequence all over again. I'm just gonna move it around. Now that I get, got a ratchet on there, I can feel it seating properly. All right, so let's do the torque. One last time, they say to do the center two A and B again, double check it. I always go in the sequence completely around again. There you are. Repeat the process on the other side. I'm going to clean the intake surface before we put it up there with the new gaskets. I like to use my sanding block again, some emery cloth or a four, four, 400 grit sandpaper. Once again, I use a sanding block because it's a flat surface and this is aluminum. Uh, you don't want any grooves, you don't want it to be warped. I'm not planing off three thousandths of an inch here. I'm just getting the gasket surface clean. Some people use their air cookies, those air wizards. You can't do, really shouldn't do that. You'll end up damaging the aluminum. 
nice smooth finish. I'll take the blow gun to that, blow any powder dust out. And while it's out, I'm gonna take the throttle body plate, give that a quick sanding. Now to install the intake gaskets, there are mounting pins, one here and one there. You can see them on the, on the head. So I'll just push that one down in first. Then I'll get that one. Everything lines up good. If I put pressure down right there, the bolt holes line up. And the ports are completely covered with gasket. So that's good. And I'll move over to this one. I'll line up the mounting bolt pins. There you go. Now we can lift up the intake, bring it on up here. Okay, so the you gotta force some of it in because of the all the accessories that are still around here. So like this hose, this bracket I left attached. So I just had to get that out of the way. That's perfect. Yep, now everything lines up. Now don't forget this bolt over here that I took off after I unbolted the intake. So I'm gonna push that intake aside, reattach this bolt to this bracket. And it's a 12 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna tighten that right down. There is an actual stop, so it can't, it only has one place to sit. So that's kind of perfect for me. And as I tighten it down, I'm gonna stop and Make sure I line up that bracket. And just snug it. Perfect. Now I line my intake back up. I'm gonna install the two, two center ones first. Just start them with my fingers. I'm gonna move over there to that center. There you go. Gives you more freedom to Make sure they seat properly. So there is no sequence other than I personally am going to say you do the center and then out. And the torque is 18.4 foot pounds. I'm going to use my speed wrench and I'm just going to snug them down, all of them, until they bottom out. I'm going to go to the other side, do the same. Make sure that I don't feel them dragging, getting too tight. That would mean I need to loosen this side up and center everything again. All right, now I can get my torque wrench set up. Okay, 18.4 from the center bolts out. I'm gonna go over to the other center. can hear the, uh, I can hear a little creaking and snapping of the intake settling. And on December, when I disassembled this, I found the intake gasket had a tear in it. So I'm pretty anxious to feel this puppy run. Okay, so now we start all over again. See that? That's why when torquing, always, always do it twice. Before I continue, now that the intake is installed, I want to take a moment and connect all my electrical connectors so there's no um, forgetfulness. And I get into the car, try to crank it, and the engine light comes on. It doesn't start. <laughs> so everything that I have connected to that I can connect before it's installed, I'm going to. This bracket, I'm not going to bolt it up. because I, No, actually I can. I thought it was in the way of the torque converter bolts, but it's not. It's got the cutout for the window, so perfect. We'll mount this up. 
tighten that down. Okay, that's a 12 millimeter socket. There's no torque for this, it's just tighten it down. Here I have the coolant temp sensor right here. Snap that in. Purge valve. This is the OP switch, which I have a new one, so I'm gonna, not gonna connect that. I'm gonna move over to this side of the head. Is the cam sensor. I've got grounds here. Before we install the harness grounds, I'm going to clean up the mounting, get rid of any oxidization that happens with aluminum and just age sitting. I just want to make sure my grounds are good. It's not uncommon to see that as a running condition problem on some of these import engines. I'll clean up the connectors. Just making sure there's no dirt. And that's a 12 millimeter. I'm gonna bottom them out. And then I'm gonna torque these to 14 foot pounds. Now we're gonna install our emission tube. That's the EGR tube. Pay attention to the depth. You've got a shorter length here, longer length. This is inward, so the longer length is gonna go up top there. You might have to flex this. It is a tube that they like to spring load for some reason. Definitely do it by hand. Make sure it threads and seats by hand. This is not something you want to strip. It's a 22 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna tighten up that emission tube. I'm just gonna snug it, then I'm gonna move down, make sure the side's snugged. Perfect. Now we're gonna remount the coil to the intake using the three bolts that have a 10 millimeter socket head, reinstall the spark plugs and the wires and route them. Let's install the dipstick tube. Uh, the head gasket kit from 1A comes with new O-rings and it's a dual O-ring. So I already put the first one on. I'm gonna slide it over to the next chamber. I'm gonna put a little clean oil on there and slide it down into the tube. Dip it in there, get some clean oil. So when you put the oil dipstick tube down behind the timing cover, this is a coolant tube. Make sure you're closest to the timing cover of that tube so that when it goes down, it'll actually line up better. Now we can guide it into that tube, force it down in. Should be sealed in there. Now I can put the mounting bolt on. That's just a little six, mil six millimeter bolt with a 10 millimeter socket head. Let me snug this down like that. Perfect. This is the timing belt hydraulic tensioner. So we have to push the hydraulic piston down and you have a hole in the head of the piston, the arm, and a hole here and hole in the back. So I'm gonna use a drill bit that fits and put it all the way through into the back to hold it in place while we install it. So I'm gonna decompress it in a vise. Just turn it a little bit at a time and let the hydraulics do its work. Don't force it. If you have not replaced the hydraulic tensioner, I strongly recommend it. As you can see, ours is new. I'm just going small increments. You can feel the hydraulic oil pressure drop. I'm going to install my drill bit. Perfect. Before I install the timing belt, this pulley has to come off. It's the last pulley to go on once the belt is, belt is rooted. 
Then we put this on and pull the pin on the hydraulic tensioner. So we'll take this one off. And we're gonna install the hydraulic tensioner one that we already compressed the hydraulic pin. The torque specs on this bolt is 28.8 foot-pounds. It's a 14 millimeter socket. Let's torque that down. Even with it torqued, we'll have the freedom of the movement. Now with your new timing belt, there's markings on it. You have one white line there. You have another line here. And then you have several lines right here. These are actual arrowheads. So I'm gonna spin this around because we want the arrowheads to go in the direction of the belt where it's running. This is gonna be marked up with your point on your crank mark. So we're gonna install that right there. Line that up. Bring the belt down under the hydraulic pulley. Down under that idler pulley. Now both of these should line up with the marks on the cams, sprockets. As they do, we're gonna bring this around over that idler. Now we're gonna install it on the grooved idler. Could get a little challenging, it's not uncommon. Sometimes what I will end up doing when I do tiny belts, see the slap I have here? It's pretty tense, taunt, shall I say, over here. This one has a little bit of play. So I'll get myself a 17 millimeter I'm gonna use a wrench, and I'll show you why. With a wrench, I don't wanna ratchet because I don't want it to be able to spin. I don't want the cam to be able to snap or spin. So I'm gonna pull up on that, find that. I'm gonna skip a tooth forward. See how the tension is there? I'm gonna skip a tooth forward. With the belt off of it. Try to hold it right. Right about there, I think. And it's right in between the spring load. See, that's one tooth off. So we'll do it again. Now I can line the grooves up in there, slide it over the idler. I'm gonna use a pry bar and I'm just gonna put a little tension on the hydraulic tensioner from underneath, staying clear of the belt and any other pulley. And I'm gonna put a 17 millimeter wrench on the cam so it doesn't snap or move. I don't wanna misline the timing belt. Now I can guide the belt onto the bottom pulley. Now it's time to install the last idler pulley. So I take the bolt out, put it up against the belt, and I can lift it and thread this right in. All my marks are still lined up, nothing's moved, and the torque on that is the same. It's 28.8 foot-pounds. That's a 14 millimeter socket. Perfect. I'm gonna double check all my torque on all my pulleys. Now with a pair of locking pliers, I'm gonna grasp onto my drill bit and pull it out. Now that hydraulic tension, it's got the proper tension on this belt. One last step before you put your cover on, you always wanna take a socket and ratchet and hand turn everything around and make sure everything feels good, no belt slippage. the compression. I'll line my, the belt is not going to line up. 
but I will line my marks up again and confirm that everything is right where it's supposed to be. So now Subaru cover, they're pretty notorious for these gaskets falling out. They swell with oil. The kit we got from 1A Auto comes with all new gaskets for the cover. So that's kind of a sweet deal. So I'm gonna install my new gaskets. And it's important that you put these on, or that they're still on, because you don't want water getting up inside this timing belt area, sand and dirt from the road. Now with all the new gaskets on, I'm gonna install the outside timing belt cover. Make sure they're all flush. Just snugging it so I can still have movement. There we go. Now we just put all your bolts all the way around the cover. On the bottom here, there's one bolt that is just a regular bolt. It doesn't have the extended sleeve like the rest of them. That goes in right there, so you'll see it. I'm just gonna snug them all. Now I'm gonna install the left bank cover. And it's got some grooves that line up. Snap right in. To install the AC bracket, we reposition it. It's got the three mounting bolts that a 14 millimeter socket. Place it in spot. Then put this bolt in. Then one up front. Okay, now I can really tighten it. Now it's time to put the crank on. So I've got to snap the harmonic balancer bolt out for me spinning it for the timing belt. So it's a 22 millimeter socket. I want to give it a quick snap. Because I don't, you know, I prefer not to have the engine turn backwards. So. If you have an electric gun or an air gun, it's best to snap it free. Line the keyway up. There we go. Put the bolt, make sure the threads are good, no burrs. You can get a new one or you can use the old one. The first stage in torquing the crank bolt is 33 foot pounds. I'm using a belt strap to see if I can hold the crank. Okay, double check. Yep. And the second stage is 133 foot pounds. And there you have it. We're going to mount the bracket that went on the side of the right side of the head. We took it off of the machine shop. It connects the wiring harness in the front, the O2 sensor harness, and it also connects the body ground strap that goes right here. These are 10 millimeter sockets. I'm just gonna get a 10 millimeter socket and tighten that down. You're hooking up the chain. It's time to take it off the engine stand.
So the challenge here is going to be making sure you line up these two bottom studs with that transmission. That's the hardest part of this. Checking to see how much further I got. So the good thing, the Subaru engine is pretty lightweight. So I do have a jack, don't forget, under the transmission. So I'm gonna try to line this up. I might jack it up just a hair. Okay. Now I'm happy with that. Let's see if I can that one. There we go. My jacket up just a smidge. Looks real good. So now I'm going to lower the transmission with the floor jack and lower my crane at the same time. All right, so the tension's off the engine. Let's see if the motor mount fell into place. It needs to be, it needs to go back probably about maybe a half of an inch to eighth of an inch back for those motor mounts to fall in. So I'm gonna bolt up my housing transmission to the engine, get all my bolts started, start them by hand. As you can see over there, I get more of a gap than I do over here. So once I put the bolts in, I might just fall into place while I'm tightening up. I think I'm gonna tighten some of these top bolts. Nothing too crazy. I'm not, I'm not gonna use an air gun. I'm gonna use it by hand. See if I can bottom these out. Now that the engine's all lined up with the transmission, the motor mounts are just a smidge off from the slots, so I'm just going to go underneath and tap them and they'll fall right into the cross member bolt holes. There we go. Make sure that plate lines up. i got to get a pry bar pull it back now. Just going to lift to support the engine enough so I can spin this plate. Now we're in place. I'm gonna hold that and lower this down. Perfect. Put the motor mount nuts on. Both sides. Now I can put the bolts on the transmission studs, the nut, sorry. So you get a flat washer and then the nut. Let's put those on. All the other bolts that I started by up on top, they look good. 
So now I'm just gonna get my air gun and tighten up the transmission housing bolts to the engine block. Now I'm going to line up the starter, reinstall the bolts, making sure that that ground wire is attached to the top bolt bracket. Now we're going to line up the torque converter bolts, mounting bolts. So I've got the flex plate in view and you have to put a 22 millimeter on the crank, turn your crank clockwise. So I've got the mounting bolt hole on the flex plate in view, but I don't know if the torque converter bolt hole is lined up. So I'm going to spin that by hand. I'm going to get a mirror and use a mirror at the same time that I think will help. Okay. Now with the mirror there, I'm going to put my finger inside and turn the actual torque converter, transmission torque converter, until I see thread bolts. Once you get one in, you're pretty much all set. Perfect. Now you have to um, tighten it out by hand. I'm just going to bottom it out. I'm not going to torque it yet. I'm going to put all of them in, all four, and then go around and torque it to 18.4 foot pounds. That's the manufacturer's specs. Number two. You gotta be real careful here because you do not want to drop one of these bolts. There's two types of torque converter mounting methods. Some people use studs and you put the nuts on and some people use the bolts. The bolts are nicer because then you don't have to line up the studs to the torque converter to the actual flex plate while you're trying to line the engine up to the transmission. And you could do damage to your torque converter pump, transmission pump if you do not line them up properly. I want to show you something pretty neat about Subarus. So the main harness down here is bolted right here and right one over here with a 12 millimeter socket head bolt. You take these out. You can get to the torque converter nuts and bolts with an extension right through the middle of the front here of the intake. So if you're a guy with big hands and you're like, I can't get my hand in there, I'll show you a quick way. It would be easier torquing it also because then I'll have more throw with the torque, torque wrench. There we go. Now you can go right through the front here. So lift the harness upward and you can get it right out of the way. And now you can bottom these bolts out and you can turn it to the next one. I'm gonna put your harmonic balancer socket ratchet on reverse because you gotta Hold the engine. Eighteen point four foot pounds. Take it off. And rotate this till you get to the next one.
Now for safe precautions, you're gonna check all of them again. Go one more time around. So now you can reinstall the access rubber plug boot to the transmission. It snaps right down in there. I'm gonna remount the bolts for the wiring harness. So now we're gonna put the throttle body back in. I've got the gasket all lined up with the bolts on the actual throttle body. Pull this harness up. I just want to start it by hand. You don't want that gasket falling down or get pinched. That's a 10 millimeter socket. Torque specs for the throttle body is six foot pounds. I do it in a crisscross pattern. So I'm gonna go from here and work my way around and start assembling all the stuff on those side of the body. So over here I have the coolant hose that goes to the throttle body. I have the connector. I have the other coolant hose. Make sure you put the clamps on. Then I have the main harness here. Pop the harness retaining clip up. So you line up the ears on this style. It pops right in. Then you pull down on this handle. It locks down. Then you can crimp this. Perfect. Now I have the power steering pump. You get three bolts for the power steering pump. The long one is going to go in this bracket. Don't forget to plug in the power steering switch. And we'll tighten that bracket down. It's a 12 millimeter socket. I snugged them, now I'm going to torque these to 18 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to line up my AC compressor. So I'm going to undo the bracket like I had to begin with to take the AC bracket out because the bolts are hidden down, mounting bolts, right here. So it saves a lot of time. I'll undo the bracket, take it out, mount it, then install it again. This bracket is where the engine crane attaches, so it has to be installed. That's why it keeps coming in and out. It's a 14 millimeter socket. I don't want that to fall into the radiator, so I'm gonna put that up there. So first thing we're gonna do is put these in, line up the two bottom bolts. Put this bracket on. Okay, now I can put the top bracket on. And now I can start the bottom one. Perfect. I have all the mounting bolts in place for this AC bracket, 14 millimeter. I'm gonna tighten them all down. I'm gonna torque all these mounting bolts to 23 foot pounds. Now I'm going to hook up the fuel lines, the fuel return line, 
and the fuel supply line. This is the fuel return. Get a pair of pliers and put that on right away. Then put this connector on. Hit it click. Now there is a lock pin for that. It's the plastic guide. So that goes like this. Snaps into place. Work my way over here. Came out of the bracket. Now I should have, that goes to the air box, but there's gonna be two coolant hoses down here. I'm gonna attach those. Make sure you just bottom them out. Put your clamps on. This is your brake booster vacuum line. Make sure that's seated all the way in. So now we're going to put the air box in. So this has, I'm gonna mount this part over here. It's gonna be a bit of a bugger. it's in on the bottom. Yep. So this has a guide for these two hoses to go right there. And we're going to make sure that throttle body hose is connected. And this line goes there. Got a mounting bolt right here. Got another mounting bolt over here. There is another breather hose on the bottom coming out of the valve cover, going into the air box. Yeah, it's a thumb clamp. Make sure you squeeze it, put that clamp on. And then make sure you connect your mass airflow sensor. It snaps into place. Eight millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver. Make sure that's tight. Then we have two minor screws, which are 10 millimeter socket. Then we have the coolant fan. It's got the four blades and it's located on the driver's side of the radiator. So you got the piton air, two marks right there that you're gonna hook up into the down below there on those brackets. There you go. And two mounting screws up here. They're just little um, six millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter head on them. Get those started. Now make sure you connect your electrical connector for the fan. It's located down here on the corner. Just trying to line it up with my one hand. Squeeze it together. Down below here you have these uh, plastic guides for the transmission cooler lines. They want you to put those right inside there so that they don't get hit by anything. Now we're gonna install the AC fan with the two little pitons. We're gonna line them up with the mounting bracket down below. So you're gonna slide them right down in. Then you're gonna get the mounting bolts. They're six millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter head for a socket. And then you're gonna hook up the electrical connector which is located down here in the corner. There we go and snap it until it clicks. I'm gonna put the upper hose on, radiator hose. Okay. I'm just snugging it with this. Do not rank on them with an electric or air gun. Just 
snugging it down. To install the alternator, you line up this back bolt to that bracket, and as you can see, it's really tight going down. That's because all alternators have this spacer that is movable, but once it's tightened, a lot of people don't realize it moves. It's a floating bracket in there. So the way to do that, to loosen that up, is put it on a hard surface. You've got a vise or something, and I like to use a brass punch. And you line that up and hit it with a hammer. There you go, see how it's seated down? You can see the difference over here, it came out some. Now when we go to put that in, I'm not struggling with it. Falls right into place. Put the long bolt in. And the bolt on that is designed to have a bracket on it, so it lines right up. So the nut won't spin because it has a, those ears on it that line it up. I'm just gonna put my hand back there, make sure it starts, and guide it in. So now I can carefully mount my adjustable, adjustable bolt. I'm not tightening this, I just wanna get it snug. Now we have the long adjustable bolt, so that'll go You can't go this way. Obviously, it doesn't line up. You spin it around. It goes on the ear of the alternator. Threads right in there. Both these mounting bolts are a 12 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna snug this bottom it out. I'm not gonna tighten it because I'm gonna have to make adjustments once I put the belt on. So this alternator has what you would call a belt guard. You see how there's two washers here? You have the big thick one that mounts against the alternator and that thin one. I like to put it right in between there. There we go. And that mounts there. I'm not gonna completely mount that because I have to see the belt. Just snugging it up. Perfect. So you wanna make sure that the, your AC tensioner is adjusted enough so that you can get the belt over the AC pulley. So now harmonic balancer around the AC, and then there's the AC pulley. Now you're going to reverse the direction, and you're going to bring that long bolt down on that idler pulley for your AC belt or tensioner pulley. Make sure that all the ribs are lined up. And don't forget that once you tighten that pulley, the mounting bolt for that pulley, that's gonna make it tight also. So what I'm doing is I'm, while I'm adjusting this, I'm spinning the belt side to side. I'm feeling the tension. And I like it right there. I don't want it too tight, it'll burn out the bearings. So now I take a 12 millimeter socket and I'm going to uh, tighten up the mounting bolt. Install the alternator belt. I'm going to go down over the harmonic balancer, power steering pump, and then over the alternator pulley. I'm going to have to loosen up on the alternator a little bit more. Pretty much it. There we go. Now I can adjust this adjuster. Check your belt. Okay, I'm gonna leave it right there. And I'm gonna snug up the adjuster bolt mounting bracket. Now I can bring this bracket down and tighten up. Now you can mount the bolt on the power steering bracket. And then we have this cover that goes here and there, but first we're gonna bring the electrical over. 
I think I'm gonna bring this, yeah, it must route through here. Because there's a connector here for the, this clamp thing goes around this oil pressure, I mean, oil fill. There you go. Like that. Connect the AC compressor. This mounting bracket goes there. Get the Now we can plug in the internal regulator on the alternator and we have the alternator nut already available to us because I left it right there. So I'm not fishing for it. That's why I like to do things like that. And that mounts right there. It's a 12 millimeter socket. You wanna make sure you hold onto that harness and just snug it. If you just rank on it, that's a copper bolt. It'll snap off inside the alternator. Now we can put that cover on. I've got a long bolt and a short bolt. The long bolt will go up here in the bracket because it goes down, it mounts into the, that belt guide. This is a 10 millimeter socket. Now I'm gonna put in the overflow tank. So you've got this pink on that is gonna mount up to that little ear mounting. There we go. So this is how you mount this. This slides into this bracket, and that is gonna be the mounting pin on this side. So you slide this in, and then push it down. And it's supposed to snap in there. If you have to, get the old manipulation tool. Pair of pliers. Make sure you connect it to the radiator. Let's mount our breather air box. This goes on the inside, there we go. So this push pins, they got these rubber bushings. I like to stick with the pins, but you need to take them off the pins and mount them in here first. Do that to both. Perfect, now we're gonna push the push pins in. I'm gonna mount the low radiator hose. I'm gonna put it on the radiator first. Make sure that's seated all the way down. And then I'm gonna mount it on the thermostat housing. There we go. Let's put the clamp on. Okay. I'm gonna prime the oil filter before I install it. Especially where this engine has been completely drained. When it was out, it was on a stand. We'll let that sit for a little bit, and then we'll prime it some more. I'm gonna put these gaskets up in place. On both sides. Now that my oil filter is primed, take a bit of clean oil, put it on this gasket, and I'm gonna Mount it up in there. Doing this before I mount the front pipe exhaust because it will be easier for me to snug it down by hand. Okay, I'm gonna line up 
the studs on the downpipe first so that I can make sure that goes in. There we go. Now it's, that'll slide right up. Put a mounting nut on. And I'm just going to flex the flex pipe enough so that I can get the studs to line up. Okay, now I can put the lock nuts on the stud to the heads. These are all 14 millimeter socket, even these down ones. I'm just gonna snug these up until they bottom out. And then I'm going to use, tighten them by hand. So just using a 3 8 drive, 14 millimeter deep socket. I'm gonna snug these bolts down. The reason I don't use air is because these studs go right into an aluminum head. And I don't wanna take that chance. So now these have got a, your O2 sensors. The connectors are connected up on the top. So I'm gonna fish them up there and then connect them in because you can't reach the connectors from down here. And the front pipe is a 17 millimeter socket. Here we have our upstream O2 sensor and downstream O2 sensor connectors. I'm gonna connect them. This is really air fuel ratio sensor or upstream. Connects right there. And here we go. And here is the downstream O2 sensor. Let's install the battery. So now I'm going to clean the terminal ends. This is a battery brush. You can see how it works. To clean the cable end, you take the cover off of your battery tool and put it on the handle. And now you have the inside brush. And we're just cleaning the connection. Slide that down. And it's gonna be a 10 millimeter socket. I like to put the cover on right away. See here you have a, a, sh a long L bracket and a short J bracket. The long one goes in the front and the short one goes in the mounting back. You can see that mounting hole right there. I like to use a deep 10 millimeter socket. Clean the negative terminal. Make sure that's all the way down on the term on the post 10 millimeter socket or ratchet. Now let's add the oil. This takes four and a half quarts of oil, 5W30 is the manufacturer weight it recommends. So you're gonna top off your fluid, fill up the radiator. So now I've checked all my fluids, I filled my oil. I filled my coolant, my battery's connected. Now I'm ready to start my engine, but because it's a disassemble, I want to pull the fuel injection pump relay or the EFI fuse, because I want to crank this over and get the pressure up before it actually starts up. So I'm gonna pull, find the location of the EFI fuse or the fuel pump relay, whichever one I can find. Okay, fuel pump, 15 amp fuse. So if I go like this, it would be the bottom one right here. And here's my fuse puller. I'm gonna pull that. There we go. I don't wanna lose it, so I'm gonna place it right there. Just cover that in case. And I'm gonna crank my engine over. I'm 
Now I'm going to replace my fuel pump fuse. Put the cover back on and crank it over. Now we're going to let the vehicle get to temp, check all the fluids while it's running. And if there are no leaks, everything's good, then it's time to put the splash shields back up and go for a road test. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.